In this tutorial, you animate self-writing text to simulate the signature at the end of a letter. The scene shows a piece of parchment written by Cardinal Richelieu himself and a pen nearby. The animation length has been increased to 400 frames. The parchment and the pen are editable polys, and the text is based on simple text shapes that are very slightly extruded. The parchment object has been frozen to prevent it from being accidentally selected. If you're intrigued by the message, you'll have to watch George Sidney's 1948 version of The Three Musketeers to understand it. But we digress. What we are interested in here is animating the cardinal's signature as it takes place. You will achieve this by deforming a cylinder along a path to simulate ink flow. And so, you need one or more paths. Typically, the more letters you have, or the longer the word, the more paths you'll need. In this case, you will create only one letter, a fancy R, that still requires three paths. To get an idea of what you need to create, select the R selection set from the drop-down menu and unhide it. Three separate splines appear forming a rather elaborate letter R. The blue and purple splines make the bulk of the letter R. The green spline is just for fancy finish. The blue and purple splines need to be separate, as you usually lift the pen to write these two pen strokes. You may wonder, though, why you need separate blue and green splines as that motion seems to be a single stroke. If you were to attach the blue and green splines together, it would make for a very long path, and the effect of ink flow would become jagged. Therefore, it is best to sometimes break a path when it gets too long. Let's take a look at how you can create those splines. Although you can draw them from scratch, you can also use the text tool as a basis especially for the purple and blue splines. Using the text tool, use the Edward script font to write the letter R. Bring down the size to about 60 to match the scale of the existing paths. If you need to, change the letter's wire color to see it better. Of course, if you'd rather play a bit with your own signature shape, you can try other fonts and sizes. Once there, right-click to convert the line of text to an editable spline. Any generated text works in outline mode, which is useful when you extrude text. However, for trajectory use, you'll need to break this letter to use single splines. Zoom in to the top right corner of the vertical stroke of the letter. Using segment mode, delete a few short segments to make an opening. Repeat the procedure to the other end of the loop. Now that you have broken the loop, you are left with essentially two spline elements. Use the spline subobject mode to select the one you don't need. Notice that it's attached to the curvy part of the letter. In vertex mode, select the two shared vertices and break them. Go back to spline mode and select and delete what are now two splines to get rid of. The resulting spline, however, the one that you do need, is also connected to the curvy right side of the letter. Here you'll need a bit of cleanup, as you need to separate the vertices sharing the same space. Actually, start by deleting this small segment, as you will not need it. In vertex mode, move one of these vertices so that it's not sitting atop of that other one. Again, you will first need to break the vertices to separate them. Now bring the two vertices that you need to merge closer together, and then select them both. Set a relatively high weld value and click the Weld button. 
Verify that the first vertex shown in yellow sits on the right end of the path, as this is where you will start your stroke. You can define a spline direction by selecting an end vertex and then choosing Make First. Finally, in spline mode, select the resulting spline and detach it to make it independent. Name it SIG Path 01. Repeat the procedure to the curvy part of the letter R, removing end segments, breaking vertices to clean up the knot, and re-welding those vertices that you need for the final path. Inevitably, you'll need to work on vertex adjustments and Bezier tangents to round off some areas. Finally, remove the splines that you no longer need and weld vertices to create the final path. Also make sure the first vertex is in the right spot. You do not need to detach the spline for this path. Simply exit subobject mode and rename the object SIG Path 02. For the third and last spline, you need to draw it using the line tool. Start by using the line tool in smooth to smooth mode. Activate, then right-click the Snap tool and set it to Endpoint mode only. Start a line by snapping to the last vertex of the letter R, and then press S to disable Snap mode. Click away to create the third spline. Follow the existing pattern, or create your own. Remember to name the path accordingly. You are ready for the next stage, which is animating three helpers to follow the three paths you have created. You'll do that in the next movie, but first, hide the set of splines that you will not use, either the one you created or the one that was already in the scene. In the next movie, you will create and animate three-point helpers to travel along the paths in specified order.